Say sayonara to 30 frames per second. The SnowRunner Next Gen update has arrived. Alongside Phase 7 Tennessee, Nintendo Switch mods, enhanced crossplay, and the Land Rover DLC. Here is everything you need to know, plus whether there have been any physics changes. Today is a day many of us PS5, Xbox Series X and Series S owners have been waiting for. The next gen SnowRunner update has been released, bringing with it some big visual changes that I wanted to show in this video, but slow internet. Anyway, I did a detailed video about what the next gen update includes already, link in the description, but now it is available to download and install. Focus Home tells me that you can get the free upgrade through the digital store of the console you own, which will either be a PlayStation 4 or Xbox One. I triggered the update process when I tried to run the game on my Xbox Series X. It takes up 22.95 gigabytes on this platform. The headline change is that 30 frames per second will no longer be the default. Expect double that at 60 frames per second for a smoother look if you have a next-gen console. 4K detail is also a thing, with even the less powerful Xbox Series S offering 4K 60 frames per second goodness, albeit upscaled from 2.5K, so it will be slightly less visually impressive. As subscribers may also know, SnowRunner Phase 7 Compete and Conquer launches today. This is a separate download to the next gen update and will work like previous phases. If it does not download automatically, search for it in the store and install manually. Make sure the year 2 pass is installed too. Then be sure to enable set update and restart SnowRunner. This is usually what I have to do on Xbox, so bear that in mind if it is not working. Now, unfortunately, the Xbox One Phase 7 update appears to have gone wrong. Speaking on the official Discord, Saber Interactive said, Due to an issue with Xbox One consoles, the update and its content won't be available right now on this platform. We apologize for the delay and we are working to bring a fix ASAP. Thank you for your understanding and your patience. End of strange voice. Speaking to Saber Interactive, I was told that the time frame is quote unknown quote end. But keep an eye on official social media sources. My source was keen to avoid giving me an estimate to avoid disappointment, so I get the feeling it may not be the fastest fix. Perhaps it will need to be checked by Microsoft again and that can take a week or two. I hope that is not the case. Now, if you are wondering about transferable game saves, Xbox One to Xbox Series X slash S is supported, and so is PS4 to PS5, but not Xbox to PlayStation, nor can you do PC to console. As for new achievements being added in the future, Saber Interactive added, that unfortunately will not be the case, and the existing achievements list will be the same on PS5 and Xbox Series X and S. So the wait for Phase 7 has been so long that I am running out of things to say, but you can expect the usual Best Trucks Roundup and other guides on A Tribe Called Cars, plus a full review, although my first impressions was pretty detailed. With that said, Phase 7 is straightforward. The only moderately complicated bit is the use of generators, which I also made a guide about. For the racing side of things, speed and power. Go faster! <laughs> Speed and power doesn't work. Will prevail, especially in a multiplayer scenario. Although stability will help too. Just remember to initiate races within the menu by activating them if solo. If in co-op, you can do it with the X button or equivalent. If you are solo and try to do it the latter way, it will throw up a message and not let you start. Is the 4km square map good? Definitely. The mixture of circuits and harsh natural terrain fits well with the game, and the single track trails make deliveries especially fun. I just wish there were more of them. Watch out for the big river and tippy hills, especially if in the twin steer. What about the new trucks? Well, we have the cutesy Gore by 4 Scout and the Azov 43119 Sprinter, which appears to be inspired by the Kamaz 4326 Dakar. Neither is earth-shatteringly useful all that fast, but variety is nice. New stickers are available for all players, not just those on next-gen consoles and all those with the Phase 7 DLC. And cross-platform cross-platform cross play should now work between all consoles, 
including Nintendo Switch. Also out today we have the Land Rover DLC. For the money you get two Land Rover Defenders, a classic oldie usually seen rusting away on British farms with a sheepdog in the back, and the new version which is usually seen rusting away somewhere near Harrods in London. This is a standalone DLC and not part of the year one or year two passes. Expect a video about these two trucks in the very near future, so subscribe and like if you have not already. It helps me buy more tea. Oh, and Snowrun and Nintendo Switch mods are also meant to be releasing today. However, if I try to pry the game away from my young nephew, it may be the last thing I ever do. So let me know what's going on in the comments if you would be so kind. As for any mod issues you may be having on other platforms, my understanding is that mod creators need to repackage existing mods so that they work on Xbox Series X, Series S and PS5. So we may have to be a little patient while this goes on. Going back for a second, while we wait for the Xbox One update, it appears crossplay will not work between it and the next gen Series X and S. And now for the physics news. I asked the developers whether or not any truck physics changes had been made, because a few commenters and YouTubers said they had. In my Snorizen Ho Runner preview, I said I could not really tell, or if so, it must be very subtle. And the reality is that Snowrunner has not undergone any physics changes for phase 7, so this backs up my theory why random damage still happens and also why the developers chose a softer surface to race on, one without deadly pebbles. I then asked whether any trucks had been changed since SnowRunner launched. The response, I quote, Yes, there has been numerous rebalancing for a whole bunch of vehicles since. So many actually that I'm unable to give you the full list. I mean, the Khan Marshal was definitely adjusted. At launch it was super duper fast and fell over a lot. Then it became subdued as if it had caught a severe case of the flu. Now I have an idea for a video, one where I ask the developers to answer some questions you may have. So let me know in the comments and maybe I can get a response. Except if you ask whether the year 3 pass is a thing, I was told they cannot answer that just yet, obviously, but always worth a try. So that is a wrap. The year 2 pass or the separate Phase 7 Tennessee DLC is required to play the latest update on PC, Nintendo Switch, Xbox and PlayStation. You do not need to pay to upgrade to the next gen version of SnowRunner if you already own it, and I was told that would always be the case. Happy days. On that note, I shall now try to digest all the new stuff and make more videos, so subscribe, like, and touch that bell. Take care, homescones. Bye.